Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony where Brigadier General David W. Maxwell will relinquish command to Brigadier General Kevin J. Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation offered by the 2nd MLG Command Chaplain, Captain Russell P. Grafe. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have the honor to stand here today, to stand in the tradition of those who sacrifice to keep our land strong and free. We pray that our service will honor their memory. Today we thank you for Brigadier General Maxwell. Like iron that sharpens iron, he has led us with strength, wisdom, and endurance. His dedication to country and corps has prepared us for the future. His dedication to faith and family point us to what really means, gives meaning to life and work. We pray that you continue to lead him and his family, his wife, Jennifer, and their daughters, Second Lieutenant Kelsey Maxwell and Miss Emily Maxwell. May the joy of this day and the honor it holds continue with them as they look forward. Lord, you raise up leaders to guide us, to give us direction, and help us see what is truly great. As Brigadier General Stewart takes command, we ask that you give him joy in this leadership. Guide us to support him and his family, his wife, Anissa, their daughter, Sydney, and their son, Owen. We also thank you for the service that his father, retired General Joseph Stewart, and his mother, Kathleen, have given to our country. May this change of command ceremony point us to the honor of, the, of Marine Corps heritage, remind us of the blessing of freedom, and point us to the grace that you continue to show our country as you lead us into the future. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Present-day reviews in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The massed formation of troops in one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of yesterday. In those early days, the line of battle was just that, a line of two or three ranks and looked much like the parade formation you will see today. The adjutant forms the line for battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the marching on of the colors and remain standing for the national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
2nd Marine Logistics Group, 8 June 2018. The officer of the day today is Captain Natasha Holm. The officer of the day tomorrow is Major Daniel Blassingame. By order of David W. Maxwell, Brigadier General, United States Marine Corps, Commanding General. His position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Logistics Group, Brigadier General David W. Maxwell. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Brigadier General Maxwell. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Sergeant Major, deliver the colors to the commanding general. The heart of the change of command ceremony is the passing of the organizational colors from the commander being relieved to the incoming commander. Delivering the colors to the commander is the Sergeant Major of 2nd Marine Logistics Group Sergeant Major Stephen Lunsford. The passing of the colors signifies the transfer of command, which entails the transfer of total accountability, authority, and responsibility from one individual to another. From 
Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General David W. Maxwell. Effective 10 hundred 8 June 2018, you stand relieved of your duties as the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Logistics Group and are directed to proceed and report to Deputy Commandant Installation and Logistics. Signed, Robert B. Neller, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General Kevin J. Stewart. Effective 10 hundred 8 June 2018, you will assume command as the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Logistics Group. Signed, Robert B. Neller, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Brigadier General Kevin J. Stewart, Commanding General of 2nd Marine Logistics Group. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. From Commandant of the Marine Corps, Subject, 2nd Marine Logistics Group Change of Command. For Brigadier General Maxwell, Dave, congratulations on a job well done. The accomplishments of 2nd Marine Logistics Group during your tenure are a direct reflection of your outstanding leadership. I know how much effort you put into meeting all global force management requirements while keeping 2nd MLG at a high state of material and operational readiness. You are undoubtedly the right Marine at the right time to take lead of this command. Whether developing and executing a comprehensive four-year MLG campaign plan, leading critical MEF innovation and experimentation efforts, or sourcing multiple MAGTAF command elements in support of Task Force Arctic Edge and SP MAGTAF Crisis Response Africa, you did an impressive job meeting the requirements of today while preparing second MLG for future contingencies. The Marine Corps is grateful to you and Jennifer for your leadership as well as everything you do for our Marines, sailors, and their families. We wish you the very best as you move on to your next assignment as the Assistant Deputy Commandant for INL. For Brigadier General Stewart, Kevin, as you assume command of 2nd Marine Logistics Group, know that you have my total trust and confidence. With your experience as Executive Assistant for INL, you are well prepared to lead this unit. Congratulations and best wishes to you and Anissa as you take responsibility for the daily operations of 2nd MLG. Semper Fidelis, Robert B. Neller, General, U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General Robert F. Headland. Marines from 
the second MLG out here, it just doesn't get any better than this. Please uh, enjoy today and enjoy this view. And folks, I'm telling you right now, this is varsity level drilling ceremony. We don't do this every day, number one. And these Marines have executed flawlessly in a very complex, dynamic terrain. So please give them a round of applause for their wonderful job today. Having been the, the wing commander, if these were wing Marines in there, they'd all be in the water, because they'd just marching all over the place. It would have been scary. Uh, and also, uh, the 2nd Marine Division Band. This is a busy time of year uh, for all of us, but for the bands, it's incredible. I mean, multiple events a day, every single day, day in and day out. So, 2nd Marine Division Band, thank you. A round of applause for them as well, please. Okay, because this is a busy time, I'm gonna to cheat today and use a few notes because I, there are some really important people here and I wanna make sure that uh, everybody uh, acknowledges uh, their presence. And we wanna welcome both families. Uh, that's an important part of this ceremony. Yes, it's important for the two individuals who actually exchange the flag. It's important for the Marines of the unit that the change of command takes place for because they see the continuity of command, but the families, Families are the ones who do the behind the scenes, the hard work, the sacrifice, the day in, day out job of keeping the family working while we get the credit. So many thanks to the families who have traveled here uh, from around the, uh, the United States and even those who've traveled here locally to be with us today. So my, my humble thanks. A lot of DBs here because it's an important day. And we started out this morning with a proctoring ceremony for Brigadier General Stewart and he just received his first honors as a general officer. That's very cool. So uh, the frogging ceremony, thankfully, was not my responsibility. Uh, we had the, the, the Marine Corps head logistics officer and one of the finest officers I've ever served with, Lieutenant General Mike Dana. Mike, thank you for being here today and thank you for helping uh, make this a very important occasion. Uh, the, the, we were looking for uh, Smash Austin and, and Mr. Murphy were supposed to be here. They, uh, given the travel from Norfolk down there, they, they, they're not in their seats at least, so they're hanging out in the back anywhere. Mr. Murphy just took over as the executive assistant to Mar Fort Tom and, and Smash is the deputy up there right now, uh, Brigadier General Austin. And they were on the list of attendees as well, but apparently couldn't make it. Major General retired. And Mr. Stewart, uh, sir, as I understand, your, uh, your work previously as DCINL has paid off big time. Not only in that Mike kind of knows what his job is now, but also your son does as well. So, sir, thank you for your service. Ma'am, thank you for your service and support of your, of your husband and, and your son. Thank you. And Major General Bob Dickerson is always in the crowd, and this is an important day for him as well. He was the, the CG of this unit previously and is a huge friend of the Carolina MAGTAP, both on active duty and now in retirement, uh, semi-retirement. He, uh, he works harder than most Marines do every day to make sure that we're taken care of as, as Marines and families here on the East Coast of North Carolina. He, Laurier, one of my lawyers, I'm very happy to have him <laughs> in the audience. If he's smiling, I'm not in trouble. That's good. So, hey, thanks for being here. Okay. Um, I think uh, the, the best way to just quickly go through what I think is very important about the MLG is uh, touch point that we use here in 2MEP called what matters to us. And the tenets of what matters to us boil down to four things. Operational excellence. Okay? It's the peak of our pyramid. Operational excellence only happens when the foundation of the pyramid happens. The foundation of that pyramid is standards, readiness, and dignity and respect. So if you build that foundation, then the operational excellence piece of this equation works out pretty well. There's no question that the MLG's operational excellence is on par or exceeds anybody in the map. We, that we as a Marine Corps and we as a MAGTAP don't exist without the MLG and without the logistics components therein that make us happen every single day. I appreciate that more now than I did 35 years ago when I joined uh, the gun club. Uh, you know, low, low decisions across every uh, spectrum of the logistician mission uh, 
make us what we are as Marines. And the more I, the more I watch what's going on around the world today, the more I appreciate the, the logistics mission and those who are professional in its treatment. So they exemplify that. But the things that this command has done and that Dave Maxwell has done to support that operational excellence is just second to none. Standards. You know, it's easy to let things slip. It's easy to look the other way when somebody's not living up to standards. It's hard to call them into account and make sure that they're accountable to those standards. This command does that. Readiness, un I mean, completely unquestioned. The readiness trend that we're on now, thanks to the leadership at DCINL and the leadership here at the 2nd MLG is on the right track. The right people are here, the right people are involved, the right people care, and the readiness trend is going in the right direction, and nobody appreciates that more than the MEP command. And finally, dignity and respect, taking care of each other, taking care of ourselves, ensuring that all of us are equal. When it comes to getting the job done, we're all teammates. We're all teammates, teams of teams here at the MLG and in the MEP. So thanks to the second MLG for the hard work that they put in every single day under the leadership of Dave Maxwell and, and today, uh, Kevin Stewart. To the Maxwells, we're losing friends today uh, locally. We're not losing friends uh, forever. I want to thank Dave and Jennifer. And we're very fortunate today that, that Lieutenant Maxwell could be with us as well. Her CEO let her out of school so she can attend the, uh, the Changing Man. And uh, when it gets to the family side of this, it's very important. Uh, I think most people understand that the Maxwell's uh, life has dealt them some tough cards uh, over the last, over this tour. And we should all, we, we are all, we all admire the way they handled some of these challenges and we admire them because they made this team better. We are very fortunate that the Maxwell's are here with us over these last two years and we wish them the absolute very best as they go to the slave labor camp in the Pentagon. <laughs> nobody knows that better than the guy who just took over the MLG. Okay. And while I'm on this side, I don't want to overlook uh, Janet Watson. Janet Watson's here with us. Her husband uh, been in forces with Task Force Southwest. He's doing the nation's bidding. Janet, thank you. And my apologies for not picking you out earlier. To the stewards. Uh, I, I kind of went back and forth of where I was going to tell everybody this or not, but Lisa used to work for me, <laughs> so now her husband works for me. So I, it either means one of two things, small Marine Corps or I'm, I'm an old man. And I think, the, the, I think in both cases that's what's going on here. But Owen and Sydney and Lisa, thank you for joining us. If, if these transitions are always hard. Uh, some are harder than others. I know, Lisa, you're, you're giving up a, a very important job. says you're good, I have absolutely no questions. I have no questions. I have every confidence in your ability to do this job. And we are all blessed that the stewards are here in family and in person to lead the second MLG. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you for being here today. Enjoy this beautiful day. Semper Fidelis. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General David W. Maxwell. I will try to be. Uh, I'll try to be pretty short. I'll try to uh, to stay out of the emotion. 
You heard the Commandant's uh, note about the accomplishments of the, of the MLG, if you were listening. If you weren't, then uh, you, you missed it, because I'm not going to go over the accomplishments and the great things that the Marines have done. Um, but what I, would, what I would like to open with is that as I, uh, as I came into command, I gave the, uh, I gave the commanders uh, some, some very quick guidance, which was, you got two choices. Uh, I can either be the bus driver, and you all get on the bus, and uh, we're moving at the speed of the bus. Uh, you all are contributing maybe a little bit, looking out the windows. The other alternative is we can look at this like Hendricks Motorsports. And uh, I know my chief was just out at, the, uh, out at the race. I think the CG was just out there not too long ago. But if it's Hendricks Motorsports, he's got, they've got multiple cars. They've each got drivers, they've each got crew teams, they're each responsible for their own readiness. Hendricks kind of helps support them with resources. That's my job. But each of those cars, each of those teams go their own pace, they go their own speed, they're driving and responsible, accountable for their own readiness. Commanders, I didn't realize it when I said it, but how important that was going to be for, for the Maxwells over the course of the last two years. But what you see in front of you with the probably about 800 800 Marines in front of Marines and sailors in front of you represent over almost uh, almost 7,000 Marines and sailors that are part of this Marine Logistics Group, responsible for the, the readiness, health, and and logistics support for the Marine Expeditionary Force the two men, and for any mag task, Marine Air Ground Task Force elements that we are forming to go forward and answer geographic combatant commander's calls. Uh, the Marines that are in front of you and those they represent have done just an absolute exceptional job over the course of the last two years. I had the opportunity to talk to all of them yesterday, but I just want you to know, and, and you know, when, when General Hedlund talked about the, the performance during this ceremony, quite honestly, that's just reflected of what they do and the professionalism and performance that they bring to each and every mission that they, that they do. Um, and so I just I really want to recognize that. Second Marine Division Band, as, as a former CO of Marine Corps Base Quantico, where I had a band as well, uh, you, don't, you don't appreciate how much they put in. And there's a few, at least I, I don't know if there still are, but there were a few Quantico band members that were, uh, were part of the division band. And so for the division, again, just let me express my thanks for, I know what this routine is every year in the summers, but thank you for what you bring because you, you just uh, raise the bar each and every time. And so thank you very much. So finally, the, uh, the other piece of this is you know, generally we turn to our families. And, uh, and we talk about the strength and the support that the family brings uh, to our ability as an individual to command. Um, I'm gonna turn that around a little bit because it doesn't quite work. So this last year, um, this was This last year I found out who the true warrior was. And uh, if you look at the program, the front cover, and you look at the logo on the second Marine Logistics logo, down at the bottom, it's Warrior Sustaining Warrior. And, and so for me, I found out who the true warrior was over the course of this last year. My job was as the warrior to be sustaining my warrior. And uh, she has fought through that fight. She's done exceptionally well, but I can't, I cannot say that I could have done that without the Marines and sailors that you see standing in front of you. And particularly, there's a few folks in the background, uh, Colonel Gary Kine, Colonel Andy Neville, the CEO of Troops, Sergeant Major Lunsford, Command Master Chief Urbana, uh, Miss Carol Banks, who is kind of the magic behind all of this, and, and a couple of great aides that when I needed to be focused on my warrior, sustaining my warrior, uh, they provided the they provided the buffer that allowed that to happen, and and I will be eternally grateful for that and what you've done. And again, when I've been out of pocket, the beauty of 
you have in great commanders is they don't, they really don't need you. Uh, they can drive and operate and make it happen. And, and that's exactly what they did. And so Kevin, as you and Anissa, Owen, uh, Sydney, get ready to get ready to come in. You know, you are inheriting an uh, absolutely awesome organization. Uh, I couldn't have been prouder and more humbled with the opportunity to serve two years ago coming into here. I, I know they uh, you probably, as you come back to the Carolina Magnet, feel probably very much that same way. But I want to welcome you to the MLG family. It is an awesome family. So thank you very much. Simple. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of 2nd Marine Logistics Group, Brigadier General Kevin J. Stewart. T today is about Brigadier General Maxwell and his superior leadership in these tremendous Marines and sailors, so I'm going to be uh, extremely uh, brief. But I, I will echo the, the welcomes to everyone and my sincere appreciation uh, for everyone to come. I, I am humbled to stand here before you. Uh, Lieutenant General Hedlund, I will simply say, uh, we are ready, the second MLG is ready. Marines and sailors, it is an honor and a privilege to serve as your commanding general. I thank you for what you do every day, for the sacrifices you make. I look forward to serving with each and every one of you as we continue to support the second Marine Expedition Marine Force, Semper Fi. In lieu of flowers, Brigadier General Maxwell and Mrs. Maxwell and Brigadier General Stewart and Mrs. Stewart have elected to make a donation to the University of North Carolina Lindberger Cancer Center. Brigadier General Stewart and Brigadier General Maxwell request that all previous second MLG commanders join them in the reviewing area for the pass and review. Ladies and gentlemen, you are reminded to stand as the national colors pass before you. After they have passed, you may be seated. Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Colonel Andrew M. Neagle. The 2nd Marine Division Band is under the direction of Staff Sergeant Alan L. Phillips and led on the march by Drum Major Staff Sergeant Jante Hall. Right turn! March! of Headquarters Regiment is Colonel Boyd A. Miller. of Combat Logistics Regiment 2 is Lieutenant Colonel Matthew J. McKinney.
the commanding officer of Combat Logistics Regiment 25 is Colonel Matthew B. Royer. The color sergeant for today's ceremony is Sergeant James L. Stamper. The commanding officer of the 8th Engineer Support Battalion is Lieutenant Colonel Patrick G. Manson. The commanding officer of 2nd Medical Battalion is Captain Brian G. Tolbert. The commanding officer of 2nd Dental Battalion is Captain David A. Lowry. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's change of command ceremony. Brigadier General Stewart and Brigadier General Maxwell request that you join them for light refreshments under the tents adjacent to the reviewing area. Thank you.